Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you're watching this show from. My name is Denise Belil, and welcome to the It's All Good. Luc is here for a chat. Today, I have my guest is Jean-Luc Allard. We could speak French, but we're going to speak English. He's a transforma transformational coach, and we're going to talk about long-term vision and managing your thought. So I really look forward to talk with him about that, because as you know me, working with my thought and making sure that my thought, word, and action are aligned and that I get my goals accomplished. That's the way I like it. So the reason why this show is called It's All Good, but first of all, as you know, if you've watched my show before, it's because it's my favorite cup. It's all good. And it's something I say all the time, because regardless of what happened in the past or what's going to happen in the future, I can't change the past and I can't really predict the future. Because as we know, shit happened and things could go sideways or different ways that you plan. So you always have to be ready. But regardless of how it happened and why it happened, it's all good. You live in the present, you accept the situation that you're in and you move on. So I won't, I won't make you wait any longer because I want you to know Jean-Luc. So Jean-Luc, welcome to the It's All Good show. I'm so happy to have you here. We tried to get together last August, but circumstances made it that we couldn't. And I'm so happy to welcome you here. So welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm glad we finally were able to make it. And uh, yeah. it's funny, two French people uh, having Speaking to do English. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really... Uh, it's really tempting to switch to French, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll stick to English as much as we can. And before we go any further, I would like to invite you to people that are there to subscribe to my YouTube channel because this is going to be on YouTube. So it's at Denise Belil. So youtube.com slash at Denise Belil. And I invite you just to to join me there and watch all the past interview that I have done because there is... an. Today, I think it's episode 75. So there's been like so many people before Jean-Luc and, and there's gems in there and lots of gift also. Look in the, the, call, the, the show notes and there's lots of gift for you to download. So Jean-Luc, a transformational coach. So tell me how you became a transfer, transfer emotional coach. Well, we, can, uh, we, can say, we can say life coach. It's a little bit life more, coach. That life coach has uh, more to it than just a regular what I learned through life coach uh, schools that I've done. Uh, there's a bit more to it. That's why we use that word transformational. Uh, it actually transformed the way you see things. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I've, in the last 30 some years, like I've been a Reiki master for 31, 32 years. Mm -hmm. But um, I was in the construction uh, business, so I made a lot of money. There's somebody here that's curious, so everybody get to meet Eva. Hi, Eva. Just came back from outside. She's got her own doggy door, her and her sister. So oh, yeah. Snow. She's on top of me. But anyways, uh, this, uh, yeah, these little That's girls. That's a favorite spot, I'm sure. Yeah, Velcro girl. So when I went to my cancer adventure five years ago, she never left my side. So, uh, Wonderful. Yeah, but, um, yeah. So you so, were in construction, you say. Yeah, so I did take a lot of courses. So when I was younger, uh, there was a lot of stuff happened. Managing your thoughts, by the way, I learned that in my 20s. I became a Reiki master. I think I was 26. And um, then after I got to construction, I moved to Alberta. I had the money to take more courses. So I took courses around the world. I was with Gary Zukav. I went, like, you know, you name it. I've, I've probably done it. And then five years ago, uh, I, had, uh, I finished a big job. And I got tested. I had a cancer, a tumor in my bladder. So I, I became the cancer, uh, began the cancer adventure. Uh, people go, why do you call it an adventure? Well, the finish of an adventure is doing something you've never done before. So I had yeah. to learn about hospitals and and I didn't know any of that stuff, but I learned pretty quick. And uh, and then, so basically all the tools I had, um, because I worked Louise Hay and I worked a lot of different things. I yeah, all the course to, that you took prior to. Yeah, there's all yeah. the stuff I had, I had this immense, and I was sharing that mostly with family, friends, and my kids. They all know all the courses I've taken over the years because I'd share everything for free, like, you know, and I used to have a lot of people over and I got a big library, but then I used all of it and it worked. Like everything worked the way it's supposed to when you use properly. And then I decided uh, after the one year where I went through uh, chemo and radiation uh, to share this, right? So not going back to construction, uh, I had made good money. So I was able to retire, uh, semi-retire. 
And then um, I start putting it together and I start like, you know, locally, but then COVID happened. So when COVID happened, you couldn't go anywhere. Well, let's learn computer. So now we start taking a lot of courses, uh, yeah. extra courses, like more course on, on life coaching, which kind of helped uh, different ways of doing things that, that I, I was taught. And then you learn all this Zoom and, and all this marketing of, of trying to do a business online. So it was very interesting. Like we had two and a half years of, of doing this because you could, couldn't go anywhere. You couldn't travel. Yeah. And um, so, yeah, so now uh, I just became good at, at doing it on, online. And now I'm trying to do more in person, which is limited to the area, but yeah. keep that yeah. online to be able to reach more people. I even had customers from uh, like Africa and then some from uh, Dubai. Like it's just like, incredible they call you and it's like you're doing a zoom you're right there with them but they're across the world so yeah yeah it amazes me all the time how you can yeah yeah it's amazing because we went from local to global yeah right and now we can't wait to go back to local because it's nice to to go and and meet people in person and and it's a different connection but i'm so grateful that we had this platform, right, for us. Like, we, we couldn't have that conversation right now because you're in Alberta, I'm in BC, and we, could, we couldn't have that conversation if it wasn't for technology. So I'm super exciting to have, to have that for sure. So you said that you became a Reiki Masters years ago, and I imagine at that time, of course, Reiki exists for, for a long time, but it was not as popular as it is now. So what led you to, to become a Reiki master at that time? Well, there was a lot of bad stuff happened to me. So when I do my, my thing, I explain a lot of my story, but we can't go in detail here. But uh, there was a lot of things that, that were like I've been through a divorce. And, and anyway, I was in the, the bad place. And then that came up and I followed my instincts. So I did it with my dad at the time. Me and my dad went together. Oh, and, cool. Yeah. And uh, it was very powerful. And um, long story straight, like I got a lot, a lot of stories I tell my client. But the same week I did, my ex-wife my my ex uh, uh, my ex-wife had an, a car accident. Mm-hmm. And we got to practice a Reiki on her. And it was amazing because I never believed anything very easily. So when I learned something, the universe, for some reason, would send me somewhere or do something to make me believe or make me experience to believe. Yeah. If you put your hand in the fire, you know for sure fire burns. Somebody you know tells you fire doesn't burn, uh, you just gotta look at them and walk away. Uh, same thing with Reiki when so oh it's all hogwash. It's like, well, no, I experienced it, I, I felt it, I, I we did some exper- experiment that totally worked, totally blew my mind. Mm-hmm. And then then it's stuck, it's stuck there. It's it's with you for life after that. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I'm also a Reiki masters and and I agree with you, like it's uh it sounds, you know, when people, you explain to people how that work, it sounds kind of woo-woo. But in, in reality, we are, because Reiki is energy, right? So we're all energy. We're all, like mean, the fact that the molecule of my hands are holding together, it's energy that creates that. The fact that my hand is softer than, than my cup, it's energy that does that. So once you're able to, to, to work with that energy and to... Um, to I was going to say manipulate it, but it's it's just to use it. It's not really manipulating it. It's just to become a, a conduit, right? That that makes a big big difference for sure. Yeah, yeah. And so tell me how. So your pat. So you had cancer, and and then you you you're still here. So you you healed yourself. You became healthy and vibrant, and and then you you started to help others go through that process too. Yeah. So um, I have a, a part where anybody that hears the word cancer or, or finds out they have a cancer, a lot of people crash and burn easily. Some other people just don't know what to think. So this is, is a free uh, consultation. When I talk to somebody that's going through that, it's, it's to help them. It's, it's for free. It's not part of my business because I've been through it. But uh, part of what I teach, like I got a, one-on-one, I can do a lot of things. But a lot of time, uh, as a group coaching, there's more given in one time. And I had a six-week. Now I moved it to eight-week course because there's too much in there that I want to teach and give tools. And they have to practice the tools. And they're easy to learn because 
the way I teach, I build block on block. I don't just, you have to remember that. You got to write it somewhere. No, yeah. the, when I do stuff is that it builds on the last block. I can teach something and then we build on it, build on it. So you never have to really take notes or really, it's just, you start to understand and it becomes part of you. Yeah, and then you yeah. do what you want. Like I share my tools and it's my experience. And then I say, okay, this is my experience. And I got a lot of stories in my life. I mean, it's been quite a life, but then they pick what they want, like what works for you, but try it. Mm -hmm. right? You know, I try all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> and I can tell you after I've done the whole thing, I don't like it. It's not for me, but I will try it right to the end. Right. Like different yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I will go. And if I, if I don't like it when I first find it, then I go full out because sometimes it's just a reaction protection. Then yeah. Take, well, the, the body is, is, in, in reality, the body doesn't like changes. Our mind doesn't like changes. So once we get into something that is like a bit challenging, you know, like we have to go over that hurdle of I'm not familiar with that. I don't know how that works. So it's easy at that time where a lot of people, that's why New Year's resolution, right? A lot of people, once they hit one week, two weeks of holding their resolution, they just turn around and walk away because there's like, oh, resisting changes. But how does, how can that help with the, the theme of our day, which is long-term vision? So how, how does having a long-term vision can help into moving into creating your future? Well, the thing is, uh, it's, there's a process before I get to the long-term. So it's your dreams, right? Uh, there's dream and wishes. Like somebody say to me, it's like, uh, I wish I spoke French. And you meet them five years ago. I mean, I hope I'm, I, I wish I could speak French or, or play guitar. When they come here, I got a lot of instrument, piano, guitar. And they say, well, when are you going to start? They look at me like, what do you mean? Okay, if it's a wish or just saying something just to talk, or is it part of your dream? Mm -hmm. And then from there, we go into different steps of in 10 years from now, you got to see yourself either playing guitar or playing piano or speaking another language. <clears throat> but then we come back to today, right? So now we have to find... Uh, when you were young, what was your passion? That's where we start. Because a lot of people, when you go through teenage, uh, especially our age, uh, it was a different time where by the time you hit teenage, you were kicking the button and now a survival game come in, right? So now you forget whatever, when you were young, you you dreamed about your passion, that like you want to be a doctor or you want to be an astronaut, it's all gone. But now we go back to that. It doesn't matter how old you are, if you're 25 or 75, because I work with all the different ages. And then we we'll go back to that and bring that out. And then, okay, what do you want your life to look like in 10 years? It's not written in stone. There, there's still going to be things. But then then we look at different things you can do this year. What can you do in a couple of months? And what can you do today? Mm -hmm. So to me, I got a lot of reminders on my phone because I got schedules of different things that I want to keep, like, like piano and guitars every night. Nine o'clock, my alarm's on. And then I pick if I can, if I can do it, if I can't do it, but then I'll do it 10 minutes to half an hour, sometime an hour. Yeah. And it just keeps the ball rolling. And then at uh, Christmas time, when I had a party, I was able to sing a little bit, play a little bit. I'm not a, a star, but I was in it. It's fun. That's yeah. My, yeah. That's my goal in 10 years to be involved in, in singing as a group. I don't want to be a rock star, but I want to be able to play a little bit of music, like, you know, 20 songs or a couple of songs and, and sing a little bit and be part I always, when I was young, like people that were singing, that was part of my, I just loved it. Yeah. But I know that's not my dream to be like on the stage by myself singing and playing, but that's part of me. So every night there's part of it, I do a little bit. And then uh, I took some classes last year and I'll do, but that's step by step. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is like, we talk about morning ritual, we talk about evening ritual, we talk about everything else, but managing your thoughts is number one because, and then power of the word. Right. If you look at it, I don't want to get too, too religious, but in the beginning, there was the word. The word was God and God was the word. And then we learn the power of energy behind every word that comes out of your mouth. And then we start paying attention and then we start building on that. And then dealing with limiting belief that stop you from being what you want to be. Mm -hmm. So there's a there's a lot of fun stuff to do. Um, and that's why I brought it to eight weeks, because I want to make sure I follow the people in a journey, especially when you do the group. A lot of people will catch on fast and others don't. And, and my experience with a lot of teachers, I've paid a lot of money over the year. They just you just fall behind. If you can't ask the proper question, get a proper answer because there's too many people. 
and she answers for everybody, not for you, then you're left behind and you're just like, okay, I don't understand this part, but I can't get an answer. And I paid a lot of money. So I don't want to do that. So to me, it's more important to do the one-on-one, -one, even though I do a group, then I'll do the the one one on one too more to be able mm -hmm. to respond. I got some clients that are just insane the way they just took off, like their life is just just little tweaks. It's not major stuff, but they tweaked a few things and boom, it's like all of a sudden their life, they have more control, they, they have their power back. And that's yeah. what I call yeah. it, power back. Like, you know, when you watch your words, especially when you're in traffic, somebody cut you off, well, I can tell you the exact word a construction guy would use, but then we switch it around and then I'll turn to a lot of jokes, right? Well, maybe he's, he needs to go to the bathroom real bad, so he's trying to go home real fast or Exactly. It's all the perception, right? The perception of, of what's going on, right? Yeah. And, and you do that through everything you do. And uh, and it's, it's you set up. So Empowered Aware, we also teach to prep where you're going, to send energy where you're going. Like I had one of my friends, she made me do an exercise to practice her stuff where you have to look at bad, uh, you have, it's called a garbage bag with emotion, and where you have to go find emotions that were bad, like something happened that you didn't feel good about. If you were in a store and you had a bad cashier and I couldn't bring anything up and said, why not? Well, that's not my life. Like, if I yeah, that's not the way I see my life. It's like it's everybody I go to my grocery store, the girls are the older, not much older than me. They call me young men all the time. I love them. Right. They're always laughing. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like Cause it's all a question of perception. Whenever you live your life, even though like, I always love giving that example, like two people side by side could be in front of a situation one will react one way and the other one will react the other way yeah. and why is that and that's because the the neurological pathway they have in their brain is the way they've been programmed or they program themselves to react a certain way so we can choose right to to react the way we want to react like having the proper thought eliminating negative vision of what's in front of us eliminating the 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 way we talk, right? When we do the F you because somebody just cut you off, it's like, okay, I love you. Be safe out there, right? Like, I mean, you can send them love. Like, hey, be careful out there. You know, there's lots of people on the road. And 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 in everything that happened in our life is a choice. So yeah. if we feel that things are negative, that's because we have somehow influenced our thought to create that negativity. Yeah, and that's why like what I teach is, is to be able to change a lot of, of that and then then you you have to reprogram your mind and that's what we do. We do a lot of exercise to reprogram yourself to to try to remove a lot of limiting belief, things you've learned when you're a kid that don't belong to you. Uh, you have to take them off, right? And uh, that's very, very important because you react sometimes that's not yours. Like I grew up, uh, my father, there were nine brothers. Mm. And in the 50s, 60s, everybody was poor. In Quebec, so it's not surprising. Quebec. Yeah, in Quebec, it was all big, big families. But they were so tough. Like, you know, the, so what I got from that is you had to be tough. You have to be a fighter. You have to be able to do this and this. So a lot of stuff don't belong to me. So I was able the years to, to remove some of the stuff that, mm -hmm. that was anchored there. And um, it's very important because you, you, the biggest thing, the first thing you learn is to fight when you're in that environment. And yeah. then talk about it after. So now we you remove that. And as you grow older, then, then you become a lot. Uh, yeah. Nice yeah. And, and you don't have that anymore where you have to fight. You just, okay, something's wrong. Let's let's figure it out. Let's talk about it. And yeah. why is this happening, right? So yeah. it, it's a big difference in life or in a 50-year span. Yeah. So you were mentioning that uh, uh, positive outcome about your clients. So without naming names, can you give me just a case study of... of how someone working with you has been able to transform their their life? Well, uh, another thing, like I have a lot of tools. So I'm doing my, I'm redesign, redesigning my web page, but the tools I have is there's so many that I can't put them all down. And one of them is I'm almost a doula. A doula is somebody that that helps people that are dying. Okay. I'm not classified as doula, but I did help a lot of people across over because of like past life regression and stuff. I was able, and I did a lot of other courses about this. But uh, so I understand death. Per se. So I had this woman, she was 70, 70 some years old, really good shape because it was a runner most of her life. So really, uh, but she was down. She was still grieving her son that passed away uh, 10 years before into uh, a volcano in Guatemala. 
She was still in the grief. She had given up. She had a, written a book, but it was not finished. Uh, mm -hmm. She had a boyfriend. She didn't want any more boyfriend. And, and it just, her life was done. By the time we were done, and a lot of stuff from the grief side we had to fix, and then we started working on other stuff, moved two years ahead. Now her book is published. She's got a, a thing set up with the uh, university in BC uh, in the name of her son. And uh, she's moved into a new house with her boyfriend. And it's like crazy life. Like it just her life just exploded once she was able to move from there and learn uh, different tools. To, to It's not about forgetting. She, she did a lot of stuff about her son, but removing the grief part, embracing his life that he had. Yeah, removing then, the pain, right? Because yeah. we can grieve without pain. We can remember, we can bring back memory, but without the pain. Yeah, and use the pain and the stress bring, that bring that, the love. You know, to yeah, have bring the love. A, a bursary in the name of her son that was a big deal. Right? Yeah. But, uh, anyways, and I have another one that that um, it was funny. She had a problem with her husband. She had a problem with her daughter. Uh, she had, uh, she wanted to, to move to another country six months and then six months in Canada, and she had a place. I'll just say that Mor Morocco is a place where she had a place. She wanted mm -hmm. to sell that to a different one. And as we started working and part of the word, changing her thinking, she got a call from her cousin that her best friend wanted to buy her place. And then she called me right away and said, oh, my God, you won't believe what happens. I got to know. She says, I never told anybody but you, like, you know, mm -hmm. as we work through the stuff. Yeah. And now I got a buyer for my place in, in Morocco. I said, wow. And then uh, the illness, her husband, everything came around. He didn't want to move from the house, which they had to move to one floor. Uh, condo style and everything happened like it was unbelievable everything happened then uh, she was able to sell that house rent another one and get the place where they needed for him her daughter uh, is in university and just by changing the thinking everything started to go into place changing your energy right yeah. i just uh was two weeks ago i was talking to her she's in morocco helping her mom and dad as they're uh, older and, and doing stuff and she's using all this these tools and telling me how like your life is like she's my number one like she says something and <laughs> things happen right it's just like you to realize it yeah, yeah it just she starts she gets it she gets it and then it was unbelievable to work with her because she was trying it like don't believe a word i say that's how i tell my client don't believe a word i say try it mm -hmm. right this is the tool try it doesn't work for you it's fine right and uh and that's the way I approach everything. Like to me, I try everything. Like Ki Jong, Chung, I, I can't even say it. Ki Jong is uh, the thing that people do, the movement, the tapping. Yeah. I never liked it. So I said, I found a guy, well, actually from Vancouver, the best teacher. Like he taught it. I was doing with him. We did the whole thing. And uh, I told him after, I said, you're the best teacher I had of Ki Jong, whatever you said. He said, thank you. He said, now... I'll never do it again. He just looked at me. <laughs> said, I needed to experience the full thing because I always got half of it, right? It would do a yeah, short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed to find somebody that would teach me the whole process because I did not like it and I did not know why I didn't like it. And now I knew. Exactly. It's not for everyone. No, it's not. But I knew why I didn't like it. So yeah, I think, exactly. Uh, I think the tapping or, or, or something was not working for me. Like mm -hmm. even uh, like you tap yourself when you do that, right? You have to do this, this, and then yeah, yeah. And then even the other one, the tapping, where they do like this and, and like yeah, this, yeah, yeah, never worked for me. But I did it, uh, and I think that's important to experience it and decide after you learn it, not before, because yeah. then before you don't know. Right? Yeah, so it's yeah. very, very important to 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 give the the time to really. Why do I not like it? Yeah, because any modality, because you've learned a lot and I've learned quite a bit also, is there's no one size fit all, right? It's not it's not everything for it's not like Reiki will help everyone or or Kijong will help everyone or whatever else, right? Tai Chi will help everyone or or EFT, you know, the tapping solution. That that these things are are a modality and and everybody's brain is wired differently, right? And that's why it's important to, as you mentioned, and I, I'm, I like that you said that, is give it your all. Give it your 100% and, 
and learn how that works. And then you will know for sure. It's like if you have a plate of something in front of you and you say, oh, no, I don't like it. Have you tried it? No. But how do you know you don't like it? You didn't put it in your mouth. You didn't chew it and you didn't swallow it and you didn't taste it. How do you know you don't like it? Oh, that looked disgusting. Doesn't mean it doesn't taste good, you know? So that's the same thing with modality, right? You have to really try it, immerse yourself in it. Doesn't mean that you have to become an expert and do a 10 year course, but give it a try. And, and, and if you set your mind towards what you want to achieve, then there's a lot more chance that that will work for you. Then you keep saying, no, I don't like this. No, this doesn't work. No, this, if you start with a no mentality, and I'm sure you talk a lot about that with your clients, right? Like the yeah. no mentality doesn't lead to success. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So it's uh, yeah. You have to say yes. Not like the yes man that said yes to everything. <laughs> you have mm. to, you still have to say no to some things, but yeah, it's to do it. Like I got five grandkids and, and there's probably out of five, there's one that will try a new food that she doesn't know. The other yeah. four, exactly that, no. But I've traveled the world, and my first thing is is um, trying food, right? Yeah, yeah. Some countries, not that great, but uh, other countries, like I go to Paris quite a bit, and then London, I'll try all kinds of stuff. And then uh, when I was in Athens, I loved Greek food, so I, I'll try all the weird things. And, uh, you know, having been to Africa, I've been to South America. I'm always trying new food, but it's the same thing with the modalities. Like, you know, I try different meditation. I try, so I got a lot of friends. They want me to try stuff. And some of them, I see a benefit. Some of them, I say, well, maybe not. But, um, and then uh, you got to be careful. So you just got to try everything. Yeah. Yeah. And not be afraid to, to experience change and to experience, you know, new things. Because the more we open ourselves to new modality or a new way of thinking then then we can grow right and it's important like you know some people when you do your dreams some people they don't have big dreams but you still have to have a dream like you still have to help you want to look at yourself in 10 years oh yeah you don't want to travel the world you don't want to be multimillionaire but you want to be home you love watching tv or you love yeah. whatever you love cooking you love your garden fine now as we do this we still have to work on your health. You still got to be alive in 10 years if you want to enjoy your garden, depending on what your dreams are, right? Yeah. And it's very important to sit down and stuff. So the biggest thing we do, I call it GPS. <clears throat> so when you go into your GPS in your car, first of all, point A is where your car is, the GPS. Is yeah. stuff. But in life, you have to find out how did you get here? Like, how did you get to point A in your life? What happened to you? So we have to cover that and make sure we understand how you got here today. Now you want to go to B. So as a GPS, what happens is you go, okay, I'm an A, I want to go to B. And you enter that in your GPS. And then when you go and there's a construction or an accident, then the, the GPS will not start swearing and say, okay, we're going home, we're done, that's too hard. You'll reroute, right? Reroute or recalculate, depending which kind of GPS, yeah. what it says. So it'll take you a little bit longer. You'll have to go around another route, but it'll get you there. So what happens with people when it gets hard, they stop. They say, I want to go to B, but then there's a little problem. And then uh, instead of finding ways to deal with the problem and understand why the problem is there. Yeah, you're not on the highway anymore. You got to take a dirt road around. Yeah, it's not as it's not as nice. It's not as comfy. It's not as easy. It's bumpy, you know. Bumpy, and <laughs> you know, and, and there might be animals in the way. There might be all kinds of stuff. But that's the thing we do with all the tools that we talk about to make that happen. Okay, you want to go there right now, but the universe is telling you there's something you have to learn first. And then we learn to enjoy the journey. Mm -hmm. It's one thing to be a B, but there's a long journey there. And you got to take that as travel. So anybody from Alberta travels in the mountains, they go to Jasper, Banff, or, or Whistler, you go to the, anywhere, the journey is beautiful. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, a lot of times that uh, family come over and you have a picnic. You, you get all the food because I have a, a truck. And we put a lot of stuff. And you'll stop so many places because it's so beautiful. You know you want to get there because you got your hotel book or your camping ground book for this place. But then you enjoy the journey to get mm -hmm. there. And then life is the same way. So if you decide, yeah, I want whatever you decide you want to be in 10 years, you want to have travel, if you want a little house, you want to be on the beach somewhere, Look at the journey to get there. Enjoy the journey. 
right? And that's and then that's a big deal when you when you start putting this together. You know, yeah. all the tools to be able to enjoy it every day. And that's why to me it's mostly peace and joy all the time. And then when we talk about morning ritual, well, I cheat. Like I'm single, but I wake up with my two little dogs. Like, you know, I, I said a while ago, five years ago, they never left my side. Yeah. And she's right there watching me right now. And in the morning, they need some love. They need to be pet a bit. And I just say good morning to one. And she comes over and she's right on top yeah. of you. My they cat's the same. They yeah. have their own blankets. Right? They, anyways. And uh, so it, it makes, it puts a smile on my face right off. Yeah. As soon as I, I have to get up and then I'll spend a few minutes with them. And then they, I have a smile. So I kind of cheat. But how many of you wake up with a smile? Like say, hey, it's going to be a great day today. Right. So we learn to do this, to prep your yeah. day. And then to close your day. It's very important. That's Which, beautiful. Thank yeah. you. And when we did the pre-show, when we were talking before we started to be live, you mentioned something that uh, in one of the workshops that you do, you, you're, you support people to create like a statement, right? And that it has to be all positive. Like it might be a sentence or a statement, but how to not integrate negative connotation into that that statement yeah. can you elaborate on that i think that could well, be beneficial. what we do uh by the end of the program they learn how to do uh reprogramming programming your yeah. mind programming the energy and you learn to there's there's a there's a way to do it there's a start and there's a finish but the middle is whatever you want to fix and what we do there it's always constructive words and and in the universe the energy universe does not understand the negative. So, for example, if you got a two or three year old uh, kid that's not fully in our language yet, when you say don't touch something, what do they do? They touch because you just told them to touch. Yeah. Right? The negative doesn't exist yet in their in their language because they're still connected more in the universe yeah. to where we're from. So, and that's why we have to do it. That's why we have to practice. Those are 21 day uh, programming that we do and to attract or to fix or to it's it's so strong it's so strong like my mm -hmm. best uh, students they know how to do it and 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 we learn to do it but they will practice it and that's why i like to work with the people to keep uh, i have so many examples but they come up with their own that after we practice a bit they'll start coming up with their own and then you always need somebody to look at for an example for for a relationship so we get this woman that says i want to meet the best men Uh, or the perfect man, or the good, nice man, and and it's not working. Well, I said, it did work. What do you mean? You probably met 10 of them. Read what you just wrote, right? What you tried to do, meet. You didn't say, I want a relationship with a beautiful man or a nice man, or you just said, I want to meet. And that's why we practice, and then we start to pay attention to the words. Yeah, to meet nice people, you could meet some people every yeah, day. Yeah. People, right? And in my life, that's what I have. I have a lot of beautiful people. A lot of people I love, they're, they're becoming uh, a spiritual family. Yeah. But if you want a relationship, then you got to change the wording. So that's just one example. Of it. But for everything else that we work on, for health, to business, to everything else that you want to fix in your life or help in your life, uh, sometimes it does not be broken. You just want better. So you can have better. You don't have to, yeah, yeah. it doesn't have to be broken, right? And Because uh, when, when things are working, for example, if you say, um, like how, like things are going well, how can things get even better? You know, like you're curious, like how can my life become even better? Like how, what can I create? What new adventure can I have that will make me thrive, right? Like yeah. even if it goes well. Yeah, and, I, and that's why in, in what I'm teaching you, when we do this, there's, there's words we use uh, that we let for the better of myself, or mm -hmm. there's, there's like four or five different things we say, is that you leave it to the universe, leave it to your guys to make sure what you ask is for the better of yourself, or when you ask for something, either that or better. Yeah. Because there's yeah. things that can, you don't even phantom. When I first came out here, I never phantom to make the kind of money. And I have a job where they sent me around the world and pay first class hotel and first class plane. Uh, like, you know, I couldn't have a picture of that, but I had programmed myself to be ready for that stuff. Yeah. When I came out here in, in 2099 and I worked for it, it didn't, but the doors opened. Like, as I did the work, the doors were opening and I climbed up the ladder and got to the point where all of a sudden it's like, I'm getting paid 
like it was crazy to me it was like wow like this is fun but you allow it to happen right because you're ready for it yeah you, you, you put it there and and that's the thing so you have to remember but in french there's a, there's a thing you say all the time I, I still say when somebody asks you how you are and it rhymes and that's why we say it like the muse on you which is better and better, better, and better. yeah it doesn't rhyme so a lot of time people will ask me how are you doing especially when we're in the field construction the guys it's hard life and i would say how's it going today wonderful or great and they would look at me what happens for me i woke up above ground everything else after that is bonus right i didn't have to dig my way out and they would look at me it's like he's nuts but it's find ways to make it nice and, and when in yeah. this case it's funny the guys were thought was like hilarious like why would you say that right but in french it was the muse on you which is better and better which doesn't matter how great a day you can have more and more but you keep in that serene place which is the name of my business is blueprint for uh, a life of peace and joy because i find when you have a peace and you can sit with your coffee and watch a little bird which i feed in my backyard you get that feeling of just nothing just like that totally and then yeah. you can feel joy so a lot of people are they say oh you have to have love in your life but joy is almost as powerful when you have the joy it's just as powerful so be able to yeah. sit there and not worry about anything that's the piece that that i yeah. try to get everybody to understand that when you work with the universe there's reasons for everything mm -hmm. even when i worked for my cancer my ex was getting mad at me because i was not freaking out no i had a trust i trusted that everything is happening for a reason yeah and that and that about the muse on you yeah and all, and all this it got better better but the thing is i spent a lot of time at the cancer in the place here in edmonton and you hear so many stories to me i was i was there temporarily to me i was fixed it's just whatever i was not but a lot process. of people a lot of people were in last stage like they were like mm. death door right and, and they had some horror stories so you you learn there's more empathy that builds and understanding the process why so many people go through it and how can i help them when yeah. i was not freaking out and i was just there and, and talking to people and just normal of of what was going on yeah yeah well that's pretty cool because it's life can be whichever way you wish that's the way i see that right like if like uh, henry ford said whatever you believe you can whatever you believe you can't you're right so yeah. if if we believe that for you you believe that yeah cancer is just a process i have to go through it's just something that is here right now and i can see myself being healed at the end like i you didn't see yourself like, oh, I'm going to be dead in in six months, right? Yeah, but there, there's a lot of tools behind it. Like, to be positive is one thing, but you need the tools behind it. Because you can say, oh, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'm fine. Well, you're not. Like, you have to have the tools to work with it. Like in my case, there was a lot of things behind that to help yeah, me of course. to stay there. But I, I love them. I know if you know how to duck, like I'm amazed how many people don't know that. But to let things um, just flow off your back, right? Mm -hmm. uh, we say like a duck's back. Yeah, yeah. But a duck, and why does a duck can be on water and a chicken cannot be is because of the gland they have on their back. There's an oil gland in the back. And a lot of people don't know that. It's like I'm amazed. Well, I grew up with my grandfather had ducks and swans and stuff. So I got to watch them do it. So they squeeze that gland and every feather gets some of that oil. And that's mm -hmm. what... Uh, it's like an oily, a little bit oily, so it just flows through, That's right? You don't drown. You make all the feathers waterproof. And they have to do the whole body, uh, well, not every day, but almost every day, they have to do this. You watch, anywhere you go, there's ducks watching, there's, you'll see a few doing it. They have to take that gland and start putting all over the, their feathers. So to be like a having the, the water go off your, you like a duck's back, there's work. Yeah, yeah. So you say, well, I, I, I like that you said that. Yeah, so it's like I say, oh, yeah, it just flows like a, like a duck's back on, on me. But that's because I do the work. And not just mm -hmm. being positive. you got to be constructive. Yeah. you got to use your meditation. you got to use yeah. other tools. And Diet and everything. Everything is related. Exercise. So yeah. there's a lot of things. So that, I love that analogy of the duck because it's so much work to, to be waterproof. So now to, to refer to a duck that way, then, yeah, I have to do the work. Yeah. I like I it. Positive after I've done all the work, and, and and it's you feel also when you do the meditation, when you do the exercise, you do the proper food, you feel it. 
then you feel like you can connect and, and really uh, fly <laughs> like a duck. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at the time go. It's already been 40 minutes. So uh, we'll, we'll have to start to wrap up because I feel we could be here all day. And so do you have any uh, last tip you can give people about uh, what we just talked about today? What's the last tip you could give people? Well, last tip, uh, <laughs> you know, it's not self-promoting, uh, but it, it, you need a coach. Everybody needs a coach in different ways. To me, I had a lot of teachers, which also mm -hmm. uh, But make sure when you pick a coach that you have a free session. Mm -hmm. Don't pay ahead. Of it. Go in and have a half hour to an hour with somebody and then figure out if they're a match for you, what you're looking for. That's yeah. very important. So to me, that's why I offer a 30-minute uh, free call, which is usually an hour because I love to chat, but I love to ask questions and I have. Uh, to answer questions to make sure we're a fit because uh, that's what it is. And do you want me to talk about the freebie I give uh, here? Sure, sure. Also, yeah. Okay, so I don't have the opt-in on my webpage page because we're in the middle of the thing. But if you go on either on the link here with my... Um, well, my if you book an appointment, right? Yeah, you book an appointment, I will give you a... Uh, it's called a Wheel of Life. So we do that together. I will send you the worksheet. And also the wheel of life, and it's a short term. Like even though I do long term, a lot of time I use a short term to get the ball rolling. It's usually done every three months. The first one is the longest one to do, and the blue it looks like this. So I have a big one I take with me when I go public. Yeah, so yeah, the wheel yeah. Of life, which we don't have the mirror, so it's bad. Yeah. But there's ten section, and we do that together. And then uh, it's very powerful to see where you're at now and what you want to fix in the next three months. Uh, it's not a one year thing. I don't really work with the January 1st, which never works. But this is, you do it, and then I'll explain other things. So all you have to do is reach out. Uh, it's on my uh, LinkedIn. Uh, if you go down to my LinkedIn profile, there's a link there, and there's a link that uh, Denise is also putting there. So yep, right it's there. It's going to be in the, in the yeah. chat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it's it's a fun thing to do. And uh, like I say, I send you all the, the papers to be able to do uh, as we do a Zoom link there. We can do it together. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure to finally have you here uh, six months later, but it, it was well worth waiting for. And um, so don't be shy. Reach out to uh, Jean-Luc and he's going to have a chat with you, share with you his will of life and be able to see if he's a match for you. And he, I, I imagine even though they just... They just want to have that session with you and see how they can improve themselves. And then they see a few months later that, oh, I really need guidance. And then they'll come back to you. <laughs> yeah, no, I love chatting with people. I love to meeting. Like, yeah. you know, even though for not a client, I just still love talking to different people. Wonderful. All yeah. right. Thank you so much. So just stay there. I'll be right back with you. So thank you, everyone, for watching this amazing episode. I hope you get great value out of um, listening to Jean-Luc, uh, he has gems of knowledge about mindset and life and how to actually transform your life. So again, I would like to invite you to go on my YouTube. If you're on my YouTube, just like and subscribe. And I'd love for you to be part of my community. And also, if you want to have a chat with me, don't be shy. Just reach out and we can also have a complimentary session because a lot of coaches, as you know, offer this and just for us to get to know one another and see if we're fit and if how I can support you and the step that you can achieve for that. So until next time, be kind to one another. I hope you're going to have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week. Take care.